Holy shit. First off, thank you. The response I received from both my family and friends for my review of the visit was incredible. The channel even snagged four new subscribers, which I honestly didn't anticipate since the movie I reviewed was essentially old news. So it means a lot. Now I have to concern myself with how to keep everyone coming back. What should I do? Boobs in the thumbnail? How about nothing but clickbait titles? <gasps> I could film myself reacting to myself filming myself reacting to myself. YouTube loves that shit. Hmm. I got it. I'll talk about a movie where a woman gets kidnapped and locked in a sealed shed for seven years. Wait, where are you going? No, come back. I'll have to keep this review as brief as possible because the trailers, clips, and featurettes made to promote the film, which is what I'll be pulling from for the video, all openly gave away the outcome of a major turning point that takes place in Room. Since I'm not in the business of spoiling films for anyone, I have to cut around all that footage. Thanks for that, guys. Hey, trailer creators, stop fucking it up and fix the way you hype films, okay? In 1984, Joseph Fritzl, this Fucker asked his 18-year-old daughter, Elizabeth, to help him with installing a door in the basement of their house. When her back was turned, he held an ether-soaked cloth over her mouth until she passed out. He then sealed the chamber he was building, leaving her inside. Over the next 24 years, he repeatedly assaulted, raped, and abused her. Fuck you. While in captivity, she gave birth to seven children, one of which ended up passing away. From time to time, Joseph would shut off their heat and electricity and stop bringing them food to punish them. Fuck you. In 2008, Elizabeth pleaded to be released from the cellar so she could go to the hospital, and while there, a tip-off allowed the police to take Joseph into custody. Currently, Joseph is serving out his life imprisonment. <clears throat> A fuck you, and Elizabeth, after some struggling, is managing to live a relatively normal life with her six children. This horrifying story served as the inspiration for Emma Donahue's novel-turned-film, Room, which tells a similar story in which a mother and her son are held captive in a shed for over seven years, and how the child perceives a small, secluded world. First and foremost, the most important aspect of the room- <laughs> Shit, I did it. I knew it was gonna happen. I fed up with his world. The most important aspect of Room that they absolutely had to get right was creating a very real and loving connection between the mother and her son. Without that element serving as the film's emotional foundation, the whole narrative ran the risk of collapsing in on itself. Fortunately, the kinship between Brie Larson and Jacob Tremblay felt so natural and authentic that you immediately buy into their relationship and grow to care for them significantly as the story progresses. It's surprising to see so many other films fail to realize how important connection is, so it's rewarding when one comes along that cares enough to make sure that it's up front and center at all times. At this point, it shouldn't be much of a surprise to hear someone else praise Brie Larson on her performance. Needless to say, there's a reason why this- Thank you, thank you, thank- Ah, I can't believe Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, card. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, um, thank you, thank you, cards. Thank you, bye. Is happening seemingly non-stop. Her performance is emotionally raw, captivating, and natural. Her character has to endure a myriad of intensely terrifying moments and never once did her performance waver or take me out of the film. She had depth, she felt complex, relatable, flawed, and most of all, human. Jacob Tremblay also pulled off a pretty good performance. There were a few times where his performance pulled me out of the movie and it seemed like the actor didn't fully comprehend the complexity of his character's emotions. But for the most part, when he needed to deliver, he managed to get there. But, and this is a tangent, now the grading curve for child performances is so slanted in the child's favor that they all seem to get a passing grade just for showing up. There have been some fantastic child performances and some really shitty ones. so why can't we just call it like it is? Every performance is important, and if a kid's performance disturbs your suspension of disbelief, you shouldn't accept it because they're just a kid, because we have evidence that they can be just as compelling as adults, and maintaining that standard goes a long way in creating more captivating stories overall. Tangent over. The camera work by Danny Cohen felt intimate and confined, which helped to inform the emotions at play in any given scene. The set design for the actual room was almost a character itself. Every detail felt so perfectly considered without seeming too showy or movie-like. They never went out of their way to emphasize elements of the room, which helped it feel more lived in and natural. And as someone always on the lookout for a film aiming to feel real, 
feeling real, it was rewarding to see such careful consideration being used to design the look of the sets. Now, despite this film being pretty great, it, like every other film, still had its flaws. After the major turning point in the film that the trailer spoiled, there's a shift in focus from the mother to the child, and while I do appreciate what the story's trying to do, it does tend to drag a bit in its second half because of this. I also found the voiceovers to be more than a little distracting. Now, I'm not opposed to voiceovers like others might be. God help you if you use voiceover in your work, my friends. God help you. It's flaccid, sloppy writing. Any idiot can write voiceover narration to explain the thoughts of a character. But it needs to be used in a way that gives the audience insight into the character's psychology that we wouldn't otherwise be able to infer from the imagery. To you. I heard you! Carter sauce! Oh, my hips are cold. Carter sauce. That's when you know it's cold. I like eating pussy. Carter sauce. A lot of guys don't. Well, maybe they do. Maybe that's just black guys. Carter sauce. Is this Wednesday? I wish I had two dicks. I thought the whole family was going to learn Spanish together this year. That never really happened. I haven't had a Spanish omelet in a long time. There we go. Anything else? No. In Room, Jacob Tremblay has various voiceovers that don't really add much to the story and essentially just repeat what any attentive viewer could gather from the visuals. It always felt like the film came to a halt any time there was a voiceover, and that constantly bothered me. But, despite the film's few flaws, there's no denying that its emotional core and believable relationship between its two principal characters does a lot to keep it engrossing. If anything, Room has made me very interested to watch Lenny Abramson's previous work. I haven't seen Frank yet, but it's been in my queue for ages, and I'm excited to see what he does in the future. If you haven't seen Room and you think it might be up your alley, do yourself a favor and seek it out. So much for brief. I even went so far as to shoot and edit our opening skit. And it was terrible.